Hello everyone. I hope your week is off to a good start. Um, welcome to today's optional demo on authentication. Um, so today we're going to be looking at how we can uh, uh, create user accounts that they can sign into and we can associate uh, data with them in a, in a secure manner. So you, you have to be the person you claim to be. So uh, let's get started. We're going to start by looking at the flow of how, uh, how, how, how this is going to work from uh, a making requests standpoint in Postman. Then we're going to go write it. So the first important route is register. And what register is going to do is it's going to take an email and a password, and it will create a user with that email and password. Uh, it's going to be a post request, and we can send that um, and see that we get back a session token, session expiration, and update token. We'll come back to that one. But basically what these mean, um, we've created our user, and we've also created a session uh, associated with that user. So in future requests, our user can use this uh, session token um, to verify that they are uh, that they have signed in, they have traded their credentials for this session token. Now, the session token uh, is actually, the se sessions are actually limited, hence why we have this expiration. Um, at this time, uh, the this uh, session will no longer be valid. Um, and we can check for that um, on our server side and limit that. Um, the update token can be used to uh, refresh the session to extend it um, and trade credentials. And this ensures that we're not using the same token over and over again for a long time. So if we take this session token, we can hop over to our second endpoint, secret. Now secret isn't anything fancy. Uh, spoilers, I guess, down here. Um, secret is just an endpoint that you need to be logged in to access. So um, we, we in the headers, uh, we, we set the authorization header to be bearer followed by the token. Um, and then if we send this, we can see that we've successfully implemented sessions. If we were to put in some invalid token, we would see that we've put in an invalid session token and we're not allowed to see the secret message. Um, so moving on, we have uh, two more routes. One is login, uh, more or less the same as uh, register, except that this does not create this. Uh, this simply lets you trade credentials for session again. If, you're, if your session has expired and you need to log back in, or if you're on a new device, or any number of other things, you can log in and, uh, and it will either create or or just return an existing session for you. Uh, we can see this session token uh, looks uh, looks somewhat familiar from over here. Um, so we've just returned the same session. And if our session is going to expire, then we can take our update token over to uh, our last endpoint session and put that in as the bearer value here in authorization, then that and see that we've now generated a new session. Um, back over in login, now we will retrieve the new session when we log in as our user. So hopefully you can see how this would be uh, useful from a front end perspective, um, how this sort of flow works. Um, let's take a look at some code and see how it's done. So here is some starter code that we already have prepared. Um, there's a few things of note. One is uh, db.py already filled in in its entirety for us. Um, so let's go through what this is real quick. We have a user declared. The user uh, is very simple. Email, password digest, uh, which we'll come back to, uh, session token, session expiration, update token. So we're storing our sessions in the same table as our users. This is not always how things are done. Um, there's an ID as well. Uh, this is not always how things are done, but this is how we're doing it for this uh, demo example. 
So password digest is uh, the is a, a hypothetically one way encrypted uh, password irreversible that we store instead of storing the actual password. So in the event of, that our app is compromised, our user's passwords are not actually exposed. So um, we can see that when we create a user here, um, uh, the email is just the email, but the password digest, we use the library bcrypt, which is a fancy encryption library, to hash the password. Um, we hash the password uh, in UTF-8 encoding. Basically, this is a one-way hash that would be very hard to go backwards from the hash to the password. Um, I, uh, this is topics like this are covered more in uh, in some classes like twenty eight hundred and other higher level classes. If you're very interested in how exactly that works, but more or less what you have to know is uh, magic function one way. Um, so then, when we verify a password, uh, we can use bcrypt's check password uh, method. Um, which what what this will do internally more or less is it will take the pass the uh, plain text password that we give it it will do the same hash on it that it did originally when we created the user and then it will compare the two to see if they hashed to the to see if the stored hash is the same as the hash of the new password and if those are the same we know that that's the correct password even without knowing what the original password they put in was um, so, um, we also, uh, have this renew session method. This just generates session tokens, um, and a session, uh, expiration for one day in the future. This uses this function we've declared, which uses hashlib to basically just get a random long hex number that we can use to, uh, as our, as our IDs. These are probably going to be unique. Um, then we also have utilities to verify the session token. Um, given a session token, we just make sure that it's the, sa the same, sa uh, that it is correct and that our, uh, and that it hasn't yet expired. Um, and then we can also, uh, verify update token. Just make sure that the update token is the same as the user's update token. So that's all pretty straightforward. Um, so let's move over to app.py, and this is where we're going to start implementing a few things. There's a couple utilities here at the top, um, get user by email, get user by session token, get user by update token. Those should be pretty straightforward. Um, they're just using filters to find users by email, session token, and update token. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to implement extract token. And now, extract token is important because you, as you probably noticed uh, in, as I mentioned, uh, while we were in Postman, um, uh, the token is passed through as a, uh, as a bearer, uh, as a bearer token in a header. And we haven't seen uh, getting things out of headers yet. So let's do that right now. Um, so we'll get started by saying our auth header is quest dot headers uh, dot get authorization uh, which was what we which was the name of the header that we specified um, now if uh, auth header uh, is none if no header has been specified then we will return false and json.dumps. So we'll use the multi-return feature that Python has quite handily um, to return. We'll just say error um, missing off header. Um, so our header, uh, and this is a convention thing, and a lot of libraries uh, that you might encounter uh, out in the wild use this convention, so we are going to use this convention. Um, the uh, bearer token uh, 
it starts with bearer space and then the actual token so we will uh off header dot replace um bearer space with the empty string to remove the bearer and just take out and we'll strip it as well to just take the actual token passed in um and then uh we'll just check if error token is none or not bearer token um then we will uh return um an invalid auth header uh and false but if we've made it this far, then we can return uh, true and bearer token. So, let's move on. Um, and let's, uh, we, we will uh, come back to that a little later and use that a little later. For now, let's register an account. So, of course, we're going to get the body. Uh, as you recall, we, um, we uh we pass in an email and password in a json encoded body so we will use json.loads request.data uh, to get our body and then our email can be body dot get email and our password can be body.get password um i will then do our our usual um we can do our usual um checking if the email um or password is none obviously those will be invalid um we w we can uh then uh retrieve or attempt to retrieve the user. So this will be optional user because we aren't sure if we've really gotten a user yet, but we'll get a user by email, email. Um, now, uh, here we want our user to not already exist. So what we'll do is we'll check if the optional user is not none, uh, then that's an error because we are creating a new user. Um, otherwise, we simply create our user, um, user, um, email, email, password, um, password, um, db.session.add user, just like you're already used to db. Uh, se session dot commit and then we can simply return um json dot dumps um and we have this dictionary just like we were seeing returned in postman earlier we'll return the session token um user dot uh, session token um we'll return the uh session expiration which will be uh a will cast to a string user dot uh session expiration and then the update token uh will be user dot update token pretty cool um and so that is uh, all we need to do to create a user. We just check if there's already a user, create the user, um, and the password hashing and session generation was automatically handled by the constructor. And then we'll just return those three things. Great. So um, uh, we, can, we can look at, uh, at login next. Um, login is going to be pretty similar um we will uh be able to just take the first bit directly 
from register and stick it into login um, because all of that's the same. Uh, we will also uh, get user by email um, this time hoping that it is actually a user. So um, what we can do here now is say success equals a uh, user uh, is not none and user dot verify password uh, password. So what this will do is success will be false either if user if there is no user found or um, if there is a user found but the uh, password is incorrect. Both of these things will need to be true for success to be true. So um, if we aren't successful, then we'll just return JSON dot dump um, error uh, okay. incorrect email or password um but if we are uh if, if we are successful if our user exists and the password verifies correctly then we will just return the very same session information um uh, all pretty straightforward now um uh, updating a session is now where things are going to start to get a little different. Um, we're actually going to make use of our um, token. Um, we're going to make use of our uh, of our extract token function that we wrote earlier. So we're going to let success and update token equal uh, extract token uh, request. So we're going to extract the token from that request, um, just like we uh, declared up here. Um, run all that, and uh, then we can check if we're not successful. That would be a real shame, but we'll return json.dumps. Uh, oh, yes. We'll return um, update token. This is a bit of bad naming. I wouldn't recommend following this following this example particularly, but remember up in uh, extract token, we returned an error JSON into the token uh, return spot in the event of an error. Um, otherwise, it would contain the actual uh, token. That's slightly subpar. Um, perhaps for next semester, I shall endeavor to change that. But that's how we're doing things at the moment. Um, so then we will um, say our user is a get user by update token, asset update token. Um, uh, if user uh, is none, then we've got on our hands again another um, uh, JSON dot uh, dumps. Uh, and our error is we really make use of Python's fancy format strings invalid update token um, and we'll cast to a string oh no we won't yes invalid update token and we can return uh, update token. Pretty snazzy. Um, and that'll substitute right in there because things are nice. Um, otherwise, uh, we will just uh, go ahead and renew the session. Um, and because we've made modifications to the user, we will uh, commit our DB session. And then uh, we can grab that right out there and um return the session information again which really just leaves uh our secret route 
left to implement. This is the one that requires authentication. Um, so we will uh, uh, start off exactly the same way by checking uh, if there if we can get a token, uh, otherwise returning the returned error message if we can't successfully retrieve a token. Um, but then we will um, I get our user by session token this time because what we have is not the update token, but the session token. Um, I'll just rename that real quick for clarity. And so we'll use the session token uh, to get our user. Um, uh, so then if uh, we are not the uh, if, if the user is not found or the uh, session token uh, does not verify correctly because verify session token has that additional check for expiration so we are going to verify the session token to make sure that we haven't just found a user by its expired session token and that this session token is still valid and usable um, so if it is, if either we don't find a user with that session token or the user that we find does not have a valid session token, then we will return json.dumps um, error invalid session token. But should that not be the case, we will uh, simply return json.dumps um, with uh, a message that you have successfully uh, implemented sessions. So there we have it. Um, I hope that all made a little bit of sense. Um, I think that authentication is a pretty cool topic, and there's a lot uh, of other things you can do here. A lot, a lot deeper you can go. Um, there's some fancier stuff. You might be able to abstract more of this common functionality out. Um, something like this. Uh, right now, we just have one secret message, but it seems rather obvious that perhaps this code being duplicated across every authenticated endpoint wouldn't be the best. You, you could possibly abstract that out to elsewhere. Um, to another function, perhaps. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do in this space. Um, you can look into fancier encryption, how that works more specifically. Um, uh, it's a really cool topic, I think. Um, anyway, uh, this this lecture was optional. There's no assignment on this. Um, but it might be very cool to incorporate this into your hack challenge project. Um, what I would say about that is that it's not necessarily worthwhile to uh, put a lot of effort into uh, very good authentication up front. Uh, authentication is rather boilerplate, run-of-the-mill. When you're working on a deadline, getting your actual features out first might be slightly a higher priority than uh, getting all of the proper security practices in place. Uh, Post-hackathon is typically the time to tighten up security a little bit. Um, but anyway, it's a pretty important topic, a pretty interesting topic. Um, something else uh, interesting uh, to, to think about and potentially look into is that there's a lot of opportunity here to uh, integrate with other services. Uh, if you've ever seen sign in with Google or sign in with GitHub or sign in with Facebook on a website, uh, those all use what's called OAuth, which is a protocol or a, a specification for uh, integrating your sign-in system with the sign-in system of a larger identity provider. Um, that's uh, sort of also similar, although Cornell does not use OAuth, but Cornell Single Sign-On uses another uh, uh, specification called SAML that, uh, that allows all of Cornell's websites to share the same login system. There's lots of really cool stuff to look into along those lines. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to come to Office Hours or reach out on Slack. And um, no assignment this week, so I hope that your the rest of your week is just generally good.